Talking with the Experts. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. And my name is Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. And today my guest is Ash Borland. And this is take two because I forgot to press record before. So there you go. Hopefully that uh, other podcast people will, you know, feel some empathy for me. <laughs> because Don't worry, I, I feel for you. embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it so many times, Rose. So Ash is from the UK and he's a personal branding expert and um, he says that it's no secret that personal branding is the key to success in today's world of heavy competition and unlimited choice. Now, in our unrecorded version, (laughs) Ash so eloquently (laughs) described the difference between brand and branding. So if you would like to repeat that, (laughs) Gained <laughs> form. Of course. I will I'm really it. beside myself. I'm probably going to laugh all the way through this now. Don't even worry about it. So, we'll do a real quick cliff note so we can go and talk about the stuff that we do know. Um, but, of course, so obviously, we're saying about the difference between um, branding and um, brand and maybe potentially the difference between personal branding and brand. Um, but so, a brand is, we've said before, a lot of people get this too confused where a brand is actually what you are. That is your reputation, it's who you are. Now, branding is the actionable steps that you take to build that brand. And I think that constantly gets um, confused. I think also branding, the one thing I would say is, which I didn't say on the, because I can talk about this in all different capacities, so I'll do it in a different angle, is um, branding is not to be confused a lot of the time with marketing. Now, marketing goes Ah, into branding. That's something I was thinking then. It's quite good. So marketing is part of the branding process, but it is not the whole branding process. It is. Yeah. And I think that's something that is actually, and I didn't say that. So maybe that was fate telling us that it recorded the other way around. Could have I think it is. um, Maybe. Um, But I think you, that's a misconception I see a lot is that your brand is your, is your reputation. And it is by the actions you take, the branding steps you take in order to build that reputation. Uh, but it's not just a solid marketing strategy, which I found, which we'll, I'm sure we'll dive into, is the in the world of digital marketing, and this has been the issue and why I chose personal branding as my kind of niche and my obsession, was I felt that there's a lot of misinformation out there because people will tag that onto a tagline and there'll be, they'll be a digital marketer and they'll go, build your personal brand, and then they're just a digital marketer. Or they're a photographer and they'll say, build your personal brand with me and they're a photographer. And the truth is, it's about having this cohesive um, ecosystem. It's made up of five areas that build this brand. It's not just one thing. Um, And I think that's a really big misconception between branding, brand and marketing. Yeah, I, um, as we we discussed previously, um, there is a lot of misconception with um, new business owners, especially about what they need to do and how um, the same, the different words are used for the same concept. Um, yeah. And it's very, very confusing for them because, you know, as, as we said that, um, you know, you'll talk to one expert and they'll use one phrase and then you'll talk to another expert and they'll use a different phrase of words, but they, um, it means the same thing. So, you know, um, I think um, people need to get their act together and, and uh, you know, come <laughs> up with some common phrase that everyone understands. Completely. I think it's, it's, a, real, um, it's a real shame that as well. And, and, and that's something that when I started to dive deep into it and really do my research, it was something that I started to unearth earth a lot of things where I was like, well, okay, but you, you've just told me it's this, but actually it's, that's the same thing. You know, it's the exact same thing as what you're saying here. Or, and a lot of it, um, what, when I work with like my one-to-one coaching clients, a lot of it boils down their first week or maybe like the first three weeks. They're like, it's so simple. A lot of this stuff with personal branding is very, very, very <laughs> simple. It's so simple. And the word that they say, it's so simple. We've forgotten to even do it. And I think that's the problem we do have now. I think living in a very digital, fast paced, immediate like gratification and instant um kind of we want that instant effect we overcomplicate everything Mm. you know it's how many plugins do you have on your computer to run something how many apps do you have and the truth is to build anything good especially a personal brand why what i give advice straight away is go strip right back to the basics and do the things you like well 
um, you know, human interaction is one of the biggest things. You know, as long as you're interacting with people correctly, yeah. you're going to build a brand anyway. And I think people miss that all the time. Yeah, but I think um, with because everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of businesses have actually made themselves hybrid now. So they're like face to face and digital. And I think that's the way of the future is, you know, um, having a hybrid business for the very fact that, you know, COVID's going to be around for a very, very long time, I think. And it's not going to go away anytime soon. And, um, mm. And I think, you know, to have a, a, a successful business, I think you need to, you know, have both. And I think you need yeah. to brand yourself in, in such a way that you can get out into the marketplace and satisfy the needs of your face-to-face clients and your digital clients. I agree. I am, um, my, my business is predominantly digital, but as you said, like the, for the top ticket kind of not right now, obviously with what's going on, but speaking and things like that, that all comes into the, physical and i think that um you're so right offering a digital um offering a digital package at this current point in time and and not even current point so going forward i think is a necessity unless you're in the very micro niche depending on your specific jobs but um that is a necessity to 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 future proof your business because we've seen what's happened and yeah that you know like my business is predominantly online It, it didn't actually get affected um, but I've got friends who, personal trainers, um, you know, one-to-one coaches and consultants who didn't use Zoom at all, who absolutely obliterated them. Absolutely, you know, like people work in real estate, just just took them clean out. And yeah. I think um, having, a, you said, a hybrid is a really, because you need that human connection. Like I'm the idea of not ha- of having a business where I don't speak to anyone just constantly through Zoom would make me very sad. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree. It, but, but you do need that kind of, I now, as I've been sitting down, I think I've had a business coach and a mentor help me through this time talking about, talking a bit, not about personal branding, but more for, for this kind of what you're saying here is we looked at like our strategies and our offerings. And it's, I think you need, what we've looked at is very much like a, there's a, a, you know, like an online course that is for, not free, but it's like, I'm away from it. So it means I don't have to be involved. So that's the the one. Then I've got the online face to faces, and then I've got my actual on like face to face. Yeah, I think that is a really good spread for any. And this is what this business um, kind of consultant was saying to me was like, that's a really good future proofing kind of. Absolutely, spread. but I mean, I know um, here in Australia, a lot of um, personal trainers and um, people of that type um, actually started doing online training. Um, you know, they saw the need that, um, yeah. you know, why should I let my business close? I can do exercises online like they used to do in the old days on the TV. You know, you used to get the, the yoga teachers and the... Mr. Motivator we had here. That's it, you know, Mr. and um, yeah, so they just did the same thing and they became quite successful and, and, I, and their businesses, you know, didn't close down because they, they pivoted and, and there's that, you know, that word that... It has been overused this year, but um, yeah. I love um, with that. I always say there's a big, it's an Eric Hoffer quote. I'm a big fan of quotes, but there's an Eric Hoffer quote, which I love. Like in it, and it's always, it's a quote that I've always like when I read it years ago, I was like, Oh my gosh, it's so true. And then it's so we are living through it right now. And this is like where you're seeing it. So a lot of people are going, are being negative and sad and I get it about what's going on, but what the quote is, and it's just what it, what, what we're living through is in a world of change, the learners shall inherit the earth, whereas the learned will be perfectly equipped for the world that no longer exists. And I think that we are literally like, I've loved that quote for years. And then as I was walking the dog and I was talking to my wife and I went, we are literally living through that now. The personal trainers who've adapted and changed and they'd, they'd, they'd skilled themselves up in the idea of, okay, this isn't working. Let's go after that now. And that actually where personal branding comes in with that is if you built a strong personal brand and you built a community, you can pivot. I, I, say I hate the word, but you can pivot and you can evolve and you can change and you can adapt quite quickly because people aren't there for the product. They're there for you. Yeah. So as long as the service is good and that your offering is something they want, they're already bought into you. And that's something I've noticed from obviously being in this space and mixing with lots of people who have very good personal brands they have thrived right now mm. because this world of the 
corporate is kind of dying off. We're still very much this small independent business owner. We over here, we call it the high street. The high street is back. It's just online. So if you know how to do it, you can really yeah, see. Well, online shopping's just gone through the roof. I mean, yeah. wow, you know, online shopping was, you know, people did it because it was convenient, but now they've had to do it. And it's just like, those say Jeff companies Bezos are just now, going he's... mental. Well, we've seen that thing in Jeff Bezos. He's now the richest man in the world. It was kind of was, but he's now like, there's, there's a lot of stuff going around um, on online where they say, which I think is an incredible fact. And this just shows you like how online is changing is that if you earn a hundred, have you seen this before? The Jeff Bezos thing where he says, if you earn 180,000 US dollars a day since the dawn of time, as in like since, since Jesus Christ was born. So BC, he would yeah. still not earn as much money as he has now. Wow. That's amazing. That's insane. And that's only because of COVID. So because they said he's yeah. because of, because of the online shopping, everyone went and my wife, she does she buys all the groceries on it. She buys yeah. Everything. I've started doing that. Yeah. Because it's just, well, one, it's convenient. And two, you know, I don't really need to go out and get infected by somebody. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. And I think, and that is a, an example of brand, personal brand. Jeff Bezos is so big. You know, he's the guy that says it. A brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. Yeah. How many yeah. people are having these conversations like we are now? I mean, he's a, a shining example of it, of how many people are saying, do you know if you made this much money? You'd never, like people are talking about him, which builds his legacy and his notoriety and his authority every time everyone mentions him. Yeah. Yeah. Lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> but he had this concept, you know, so many years ago and, you know, Amazon was always um, a bit of a big thing. Even when his big factory burnt down, you know, he still kept, he still kept working and, you know, nothing really changed. And it's, he's an yeah. amazing man. Like he's one of those, he's like our generation of whether we like him or dislike him, what he's done is proved that, um, you know, like he was just a normal guy. Like he is just a normal guy. He's a high performer. I get that. He's a mm. high, you know, he does high performing activities and does that, but he's, but he is a, people forget this and that's one of the, one of the reasons why i did my own podcast for this was getting people who've got good personal brands people who've got million followers two hundred thousand followers and asking them what was it like when you started because i think people misunderstand that that we can all build this personal brand business we want that's profitable mm -hmm. that lives the life we want because all the people we look up to all started with nothing yeah with they nothing. started with nothing yeah it's yeah. incredible we all think we all think we're in a, you know, very poor position, but really we're not. We we just need to work a bit smarter. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so you help um, people stand out from the crowd. Tell me how you do that. Of course, yeah. So um, how I help people, but how how I do it is um, obviously I don't want to be too salesy so i won't talk about how i do it as regards to like join my okay how is it done thing. then ash so say, change the words change the words because otherwise you're pushing me down a place i don't want to go for the exact reason i'll tell you um so how is it done um to stand up from the crowd what i what happened was when i started getting into this stuff i um i started to look around and think okay so how do you um become the go-to person in your industry how do you become the go-to thing and this is what people um, the, the stuff I teach is quite controversial with this because it is based more on psychology than it is on woo-woo um, as much as people I'm a lover a big fan of that I'm very much a spiritual person but I also have to be cemented in fact as well and um, how you do it and what I discovered was there's a thing called the pigeonhole effect which people don't realize so personal branding is effectively if I think of something I, and then I automatically think of you, Rose. For example, so if I think experts and then I think you, we need to create, without trying to get too nerdy with this, but we need to, we need, you need to create this, effectively this, um, this bias, this um, cognitive bias in your head that goes, expert Rose, straight away. I don't have to think of anything else. And that's how you get these brands. Amazon, it's the same thing. I'll be saying, oh, I need something online, Amazon. We're not even thinking of anything else. This is what this is to do with, um, it's to do with us as humans. We're lazy. We're very lazy. We're, we only literally take in about 20% of the information around us. So when you realize this 
how you stand out from the crowd and from your competitors is you have to effectively program your audience to think of you for this one specific thing. This is where people go very, very wrong when it comes to personal branding. So different, well, same with branding, but with personal branding itself is a lot of the time when you speak to people about personal branding, they'll say, be authentic, which is great. That's a really good thing to say. I completely agree with it, but it's not tangible. It's not tangible. You can't, how can I be authentic? You know, you can't buy that, it. You can't buy authenticity anyway. No. And I, you know, if someone comes to me and I see people like they'll work with other coaches and they'll go, well, we're working on our authenticity. I'm like, okay, how you tell me how you're doing that? Cause I don't know how you're doing that. Um, so what you have to look at is it's not about being authentic. It's about creating, there's, there's a thing for, for standing out. There's a thing called this, there's the social influence principles. So Ch uh, Robert Cialdini create the, created the influence principles, which is six, but for social influence, there's only three really. And they work in tandem. And this is something for you guys to, for your audience and take away because it's all what stuff I teach. And it's also stuff that's in my courses so is that actually the first thing you have to do if you want to try and stand out is you have to create reciprocity. So you have to create reciprocity is the idea that if I give you something, Rose, you will feel, I give you something without any expe expectation of anything in return. You will feel naturally obliged to give something back. It's just naturally built into us. It's why when I give a birthday gift, we, you, you're like, oh, I've got to give you one back. And it's why I hate getting Christmas cards because I hate giving Christmas cards. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, I've got to give you one. It's built into us. Now, when you understand this, this psychology thing, and you start, to, and we're talking about this pigeonholing effect of yeah. establishing yourself. As, so you pick your niche, and I'm only going to talk about that. Don't talk about your family. Don't talk about your kids. Don't talk about your dog. Don't talk about your food. Don't talk about your workout. Talk about the thing you want to be known for every single day. And then, from a practical point of view, you start to build reciprocity, which is where we hear the term add value. So the term add value, which is thrown around and is brilliant, it's a brilliant term. But if we look at like a Simon Sinek thing of ad, but ad value is, is what you are doing. So that might be creating content. It might be, you know, sharing free resources, but why you are doing it is you're trying to build reciprocity. The more reciprocity you build, the more people fe will feel like they owe you. The more people that feel like they owe you. And I always say, think of it like a cup filling with water. When that fills and overflows, people will start to buy from you. They'll start to buy from you when you hit the second principle, which is authority. So once you're seen, if you build up enough reciprocity, which is the first one, the only one you really have control over. So if you just keep adding value all the time without expecting anything returned, you'll be shocked how quickly you can cut through the noise, stand out from everyone. And everyone goes, wow. Once you build authority, people will buy from you because they think, well, Ash or Rose is always there. They're, they're always doing their stuff. Once people buy from you, the third and final principle of this is social proof, which means that if five people have bought from you, 10 people will buy from you. And if 10 people have bought from you, 20 people will buy from you. And the only way you do it, and this is where people go wrong, is they think they're an authority, but they don't add reciprocity. Or they start putting their, their social proof out, but without having the reciprocity, the value-adding concept constantly, you're not filling that well, that cup all the yeah. time till it overflows. And um, that is how, which, without trying to sound too deep with it, that's how you do it is you have to laser focus on one thing so that you are, every time I think of Rose, I think of experts. That's the podcast. Or, you know, I'm just doing it on here, but like in anything. So you can do anything. David Beckham is bigger than football. Everyone hates me when I say that. I can't stand football. But everyone in the world yeah, he is. will know who David Beckham is. Yeah. Whether he, you well, only, only because he's so handsome. It's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but he is, a, he is a shining beacon of an example of this. Is that yeah. you could go over to the US, who doesn't really, don't really like football, but they know who David Beckham is. Yeah, they do. Because he's pigeonholed himself that... I don't like football at all to much to my dad's dismay in this, in this, in this, in this <laughs> in the UK, that's a big deal, but that I don't, can't stand it. But if so, whenever I was selling or talking to someone brings up football, the first thing I'll talk about is David Beckham because I, that's who comes to my mind. Yeah. And you can do that yourself in a more of a micro, obviously you can't write David Beckham yet. <laughs> um, but that type of effect comes and that's the pigeonhole effect, but how you actually do that is by, using those influence principles yeah. and people don't do that 
Um, they, they, this is what we said about overcomplicating. That's very simple. If you add value without expecting anything in return, it's a Zig Ziglar quote. Again, I love quotes. Is that if you give every, everybody everything they want, you will get everything you want. And um, it really is as simple as that. Clarity in your message and then add value and you will and to add value without trying to hold anything back. Yeah, I see a lot of people being salesy. Um, you know, they try to um, to get married before they've even, um, you know, had oh, an yes. engagement party. So That's a very nice way of putting it. That's not how I normally say it. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you, you, that's, do you know what? With salesy, just quickly that before I, sorry for putting you in there, but the, 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 the quickest way, and this is a little tip that I said, the quickest way to um, put, a, put a bulldozer through your reciprocity in your brain is by putting a call to action on the end of a video or something. The moment you say, buy my stuff, psychologically speaking, the reciprocity effect no longer exists because you are now trying to sell to me, which means I don't have to pay you back because okay. that's your Okay, that's, that's a very interesting concept because mm. I know that um, I've been coached um, you know, a couple of times and yeah. you know, always at the end of your video, at the end of your blog, at the end of your post, always put a call to action. And so that's so, quite interesting. So there's a diff differential. It's inter so where this goes on is that there's a differenti that was like differentiating between the type of call to action you use. So I, I, I refer to there's hard call to actions and soft call to actions. So a hard call to action is buy my course. Hard call to action is work with me if you want to know more or book a call in. As soon as I feel, as soon as this happens, this will diminish, if not completely wipe out this reciprocity feeling in, in your audience's brain because they feel like you're after something. Whereas if they don't feel like that, they'll come to you because they listen. What you should do though, and this is where your coaches, they're very right, is in, and this is where there is truth in this, this method in the madness behind it. And people don't, that's what we say when people get confused, is soft call to actions are vital. So soft call to actions is like sending Alice down the rabbit hole in, you know, to go like in Alice in Wonderland. You've got to keep your, at the end of every video or every piece of content, you want to entice them to go and watch more content, go and read more content to try and get them to, to increase this reciprocity feeling. So it might be like, if you really enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this video because it, it aligns with it. Or if you know, like, so you see this all the time, or well, you see it on the sites I do a lot where it's like, if you really like this video, here are my three playlists on YouTube that, um, are, that will cover this, this, and this. That's a soft CTA. They're very important because otherwise you can, you, you want the task to be left un, unfinished. So they're continually going down because the more they consume your content, the more that reciprocity feeling is going to be amplified. But the moment you, you say buy something, you better know that they're pretty secure you know they, they better be consuming a couple of hours of your content by that time otherwise you can quite easily lose them that's um that's good very good advice i, might I do know my, a little bit <laughs> i might look at my landing page now <laughs> that's fine that's good that's it's it's um this you know what i said to you about so simple and yet we forget that's it's literally this like we yeah. don't we don't um yeah, it, it's good. It works. I mean, it works. And it's um, the way you want it is you want people to come to you. I love it. My kind of sales funnel is that I get it to the point where like I've got a, a, a discovery call after this and um, I never outreach. I never have ever once in my entire career gone, would you like to work with me? Let's have a call. Yeah, when I I'm, hate sales calls. Oh. I just... Ugh. Well, like, like the guy will come on today. I know it will happen. It'll be a half an hour sales call and a we'll, half an hour discovery call. And how this works, part of this part of this reciprocity funnel is that they will come on the call. I will talk to them. They'll ask what I do. And what I do is I say, what I will do is I will coach you and help you so that you can get calls like this. And that's pretty powerful when they, because they're like, oh yeah actually i'm on this call because i've watched so much of your content and really like and they'll quote things i've said i mean i'm like and it's weird but it's part of that thing now does it mean that it's a long game yes it is and so you know you're talking years you're not talking 
weeks or months. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's how people like Jeff Bezos have made so much money. So it's that it's this, it's a compounding effect. So it's, it's definitely the long-term investment. Yeah, it's very good advice, Ash. Thank you for sharing that because, um, yeah, as I said, I'll have a look at my website landing page now. <laughs> Go for it. I'm not very good with websites, but um, yeah. <laughs> no, because I have, a, I have a, a call to action at the end of it. And um, yeah, I'm leading them down to uh, obviously a hard call to action. So yeah, I, I need to uh, make that a Your website possible. might be okay because if they're on your website, they're on your website. Do you know what I mean? So I think that might be, you might be all right with that but it's more when you're distributing over social again it's again we can go turn to the nuances of it but it's like it's more when you're on social platforms so people don't go if i'm on your website i maybe a hardcore to action is probably okay you know when you jump on there buy my course do this because you're on my site yeah so if you typed in my site i'm, I'm sorry but you're gonna look at it <laughs> so it's that type of thing but where people misunderstand is social so social media is there for consumption and most of the people in there are not going to know who you are. Oh, uh, well, I'm doing all right then. then so I'm not yeah. You'll be fine. Do you know what I mean? That's <laughs> what I mean. Like, you'll probably be fine. Like it's this thing of most people on social media, you know, that they're there for entertainment or education. They're not there to be sold to. Yep. I agree. I, as you said, I, you're going on a, on a, a discovery call and you know, I, I just can't do them. I, I, I find that um, I get like to the point of, yep, I really want you to buy from me, but, and I have to stop myself from saying it, but you know, mm. it's hard, isn't it? (laughs) Definitely, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, what else have you got to share with me, young man? Whatever. What do you want to know? I don't know. Um, they want to see if the person backing the product has a reliable personal brand, which has authority in the industry. Okay. Um, that is just a trust factor, really. Um, and actually something else I speak about as well, because we have, we spoke about it when the non-recorded one, but we took it, which is a little <laughs> bit about it's why it's 2020 and beyond and why it's so important. Um, Cause that's something we started elaborating on. Then you were like, Oh, we're not recording. Oh <laughs> so, yes. So I'll just mm. do on that one. And then we'll do about the authority because it will add to this. So the thing I say to you all the time is the 2020 and kind of this next decade, um, your personal brand is going to be vital for your success and also why it's so readily available now. So the reason why it was so vital is that the more the world we live in now is amazing because it's to do with, with the internet. The connectivity is incredible. What we can do that we never could do before is awesome. The problem we have though with it is, we and I see this all the time where when what we sell, if we sell a commodity based thing, which is why people are going wrong, is that they if they sell a commodity, so in other words, uh, and, and it really hit home with me with this was like I had a photographer friend of mine, uh, he's a photographer and graphic designer, very weird mix, but it's one of those that's what he does. And um, I uploaded an app on one of my YouTube videos, which is like I have a you know, it's the playlist called Personal Branding Tools, which is like highlighting some of the software you can use to make content and and whatever because a lot of people ask the questions they ask and one of the things he said he said this app this app was an app called photo fox which is on the iphone and it effectively and it, and it was it was actually a quick shot it's part of the photo fox suite so what this app does is effectively change the sky the colors everything on a phone we're by clicking of a button it was just like click 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 and I was chatting with him and he said, and this is where it's very relevant for why you need to build a brand. He said, what's scary about this, Ash? He said, is that that is what people would pay me a lot of money to do. And he said, that concept there to change the skies, to do this. He said, I've made it. He's quite, he's a lot older than me. He, he's, he's, um, and he was saying that he, he said, I've always been paid a lot of money to do that. He said, what's scary is now you can get an app that, does is, it for you. that does it for you in seconds he said which would take me hours to do that yeah. because it's all preset and he said it really worries me he ended up becoming a client uh, but what he said was it worries me and i said well that's when they're coming with the sales pitch but it wasn't but i was like this is why personal branding is so important i said because your clients need to come to you for you it's an experience it's something that they're coming to you that you have to be the biggest unique selling point if you're not the unique selling point and you're trading in and this is something that i try to challenge myself as well with this because it's very difficult if you are trading in something that 
you know how to do something that others don't, which is obviously the same. That's why we, what we all do with that, with as consultants, coaches, anything like that. But if that is your only selling point, you are going to lose in the long run because the internet will, the tech world, you're never going to outbid no, with it. It'll consume never you. Gonna, it'll consume you. There'll be, you know, you can see it already. Meditation, all of a sudden headspace comes out. You yeah. know, counting your calories. That's come out. Online, online coaching. We spoke about personal trainers before about how they're doing. Like online coaching. You can buy an app, 100 pounds, and I can get as many classes as I want off my phone that I can put onto my TV. So you've got to start the reason why it's going to be vital. And I think we're going to, and this is the reason why I completely honest with you, why I pitched my flag in the ground and said, this is what I'm going to specialize in for, for my life. This is going to be my life's work because I really believe that this is going to become more and more um, like vital. It's unique. It's, very much, it's a unique thing. It's, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I had a personal branding coach, um, you know, give me some, um, tips on how to do my LinkedIn site. And um, then I had a, a webinar with, I had a podcast with somebody last night who is a LinkedIn specialist and said that what I, well, he hasn't seen my site yet, but how um, I, I know that how I had set it out was not going to get me any clients because of yeah. the way he described it. So well, that's, that's the thing that's quite funny with this is understanding that so it's funny you say that because that's actually quite interesting and the topic i wouldn't mind actually do it a bit deeper on is a personal branding coaches um consultants i mean really it's more of a coach because the problem with consulting on the personal brand is it's it's you so how can i tell you how to live your life and yeah do what you and do? that's what they did yeah yeah you have to you can't do that and, I, and i've done that you know i have done that and that's something i've learned is um i you know it's all about being my whole tagline and it's not even my tagline it's my philosophy it's what i live by it's what i'm what i get when i do public speaking events it's not for personal branding it's about it's called embracing individuality so it's about being comfortable in who you are it's my whole mm -hmm. kind of other story but it's it's this thing which i find a lot of the time is there's a lot of personal brand there's not many personal branding coaches real ones who actually look at the a personal branding in its entirety not a personal branding coach, let me sit down with you and tell you how you should optimize your social, because that's a social media. That's what they consultant. did, you know, and I spent good money for it. And um, yeah. yeah, and I got, you know, six pages of how I should be posting on socials. And no, but that that's was, what that I mean, was like, all I got. I didn't get anything out of it. Well, that's what I find, you know, like with myself, like, so I have like guided, I have a guidance session, strategy sessions and transformation sessions. And they're, they're the packages that kind of come up and how I'm not trying to say, but this is how, how, yes, how right. I had to look at it is that, that I will work with clients through their own journey of what is it you want? You know, so if you said to me, okay, I want to be this. And we talked about the pigeonhole effect. What I do is, because this, is this is what they're not doing. And this, and this is what I'm going to be completely honest. I've not, I wasn't in this industry very long because I haven't been in the industry as long as most of my competitors. And I've blown past all of them because they're all doing exactly what you just said. None of them are actually studying the source material. None of them are actually looking at psychology behind the way that humans interact with each other, behind the way that, that this pigeonholing effect, this ecosystems all of this stuff what they're saying is you need to be on linkedin because linkedin's the number one platform right now and everybody's going to be on it you need to go on tiktok because tiktok is the number one and you're like no you know i've got clients who are like i've got a client who absolutely hates being online terrified of it so i was like okay you need to i mean it doesn't really work right now but it's like you need to go to loads of networking events you need to be a public figure in your in your area personal brand is so much more digital it's about branding yourself so that if i bump into you in the supermarket I know who you are and I know what you do. Yeah. Um, your real estate agents kill it. They're like an amazing example of it in the, in Australia and in the U S real estate agents are a brilliant example of personal brand done correctly. When done correctly when is that people see them yeah. and go, when done. Yeah. No, no, most are not, but you know, the ones that you like, they're everywhere. And if you see them in the street, they're like mini celebrities. Yes. And they're not, it, it works, but I think there's too many um, cowboys who are just, digital marketing consultants which truthfully anyone could be a digital marketing consultant watch a couple of youtube videos and you'll be fine yeah um, i guess yeah you know it I mean? was but a lesson well learned um to be I've honest done it before as well don't worry i mean i've done i did it with a personal trainer once i bought a personal training course amazing personal brand the guy had um 
I bought the course and and um, the program, sorry, and the program was literally the program I'd already been doing, which I'd got online. It was a Y3T, but he just changed the, and I was like, oh. Yeah. I just paid all that money. It's quite a lot of money again. And I was like. Yeah, okay, I did too. Actually, I've paid another coach um, to get me a landing page to cost me quite a bit of money. And in the end, really, I was told it's too wordy. But, you know. But the other thing I'd say is it's your opinion. And that's the thing I also deal with is it's all about what you like, you know. So, like, I've sat with clients before. I had one of my clients who we built a podcast. She's doing really well. She's interviewing some great guests on there. And it's, it's all, but the niche. She said to me, oh, have you listened to it? I was like, no. Why would I listen to your podcast? She was like, when it's money-making mothers. I was like, why would I listen to your podcast? I'm not a mother. Why would I do it? And that was this thing of like, and that's the same. Oh, no, don't freeze on me. Oh, Hello. Unmute yourself. I didn't realise I was muted. I wonder why that happened. Yeah, right. A mother making mother making podcast. Yeah. Yes. So it's money money making mothers. But what I said to her was, and this is the same thing that I've learned, um, and I'd say this with people for listening with personal branding is, um, just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's not right for the client. And I think that's the hard thing I see is a lot of people give their opinion. Mm. and don't actually listen to what you know like what you want because you know i say it all the time my wife like i this office our studio that we built we've got this built in our garden um truthfully like she hates it because it's not mm. her style it's not her style and i can't stand she does a lot of content and i'm like oh i don't like her style not in mm. like person but i mean the style of content she creates but i'm aware that that's her style I think that's the thing that people don't get when you employ sometimes you get these, these consultants or coaches and it's a learning curve. I've had to learn that. It's not, mm. here's my template. Take it. It's, yeah. What do you want? Yeah. Okay. Ash, tell me about your packages and, and what you have. Yeah, sure. So, um, I have, um, so what I do is like I say I've got most of my content is free. So I went big at like with where people to start. If, in, if anyone's listened to this and thinks, doesn't think gosh he rambles on and instead actually thinks he's quite interesting um the best place to start is youtube um it's a new channel because i set my podcast up and then made the mistake of not going on youtube and did well on the podcast and didn't put it on youtube yeah. um so check out youtube which is ash Borland. there are three playlists there three videos every single week which is um, an interview with someone who's established their personal brand um there's also personal branding 101 which is me talking and giving advice about 10 minutes on a specific most answered asked question so it's the most asked questions in personal branding i'm answering them every week give you more contextually advice and then personal branding tools which is the what software can you use it's all about being able to create content that's scalable and, and easy for people to make i would recommend you start there um, if you do want to work with me you can just go on my website which is www.ashballand.com. And there is a, a range of different packages depending on what you um, want to achieve, you know, from like just a bit of a guidance strategy all the way up to full accountability and transformation. Um, but like I say, what I would say to everybody is before you even go near that, I would definitely recommend you consume as much free content from me as possible to see if I'm a right fit for you. Because there's a lot of value in that, that you might not even need to use me if you watch enough of it. Well, that's a, that's a great I guess, I, well, I would say it's a great offer because not a lot of people would be so generous as to say, go and grab my free stuff and then, you know, come and see if you want to work with me. Although you did allude to that previously, that the more free things that you give to people, people feel that they will need to, um, you know, come back and give back to you. So It is, it's that. And it is this thing of, you know, I'd be very open and transparent with you, Rose. My goal is to be the number one personal branding kind of, expert in the world in two decades that's my goal and that's why i spend every single day trying to move the needle forward towards that so 
the only clients that I want, I don't want to work with people if they, if they don't want to work with me, it's a very thing of like, I'm, I'd rather them consume. That's why I come on podcasts and interviews. I'm trying to share this message because a lot of this stuff can just be watched on a YouTube channel. It um, it's only if you have specific things you want working with me, then hundred percent I'm the guy to do it. But um, if not, consume as much free content as possible there's loads perfect all right well we'll leave it there i know you've got um a call to come to go on to um yeah. <laughs> shortly so i know you're probably behind time now after we mucked up the recording in the first place no, it's fine <laughs> it's brilliant <laughs> all right well ash thank you so much i've really enjoyed our chat today and i've i've learned quite a lot and i will go and check out your youtube channel and, um, it's so very new it's there. only about 150 subscribers at the moment because we've just started it but it's um the goal is to grow it so well as we all are trying to grow our little channel so yeah well done and uh yeah great niche you've got i think it's um something that's very much needed in the in in the world of uh any kind of marketing or business um so yeah well done and um Thank keep you. going oh i've got you on linkedin now i think so if you um I had definitely have. I said, if you ever have any questions, Rose, at all, obviously I'm more than happy to answer if you want me to ever to do that. Cause like I'm trying to build networking with people as well, which is why I saw your, your show and thought, well, you look like the type of person I want to speak to. So, um, oh, isn't that nice? so please do, you know, don't be a stranger. I'm more than happy to like, if you have any questions or if I've got questions that I, I would definitely love to chat. Terrific. Thanks Ash. Have a great Amazing, day. Bye-bye. Yeah. Day. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Bye.